Now, have you ever thought about building your own house? You'd have to buy the land, get an architect, buy the materials, the list goes on. But you can build your own place from mud. Now, it's pretty easy to do, it's cheap, and it's something you can do yourself. It's become stylish now to say we're conserving energy and resources, and it's begun to affect what we drive, what we eat, and the houses in which we live. Imagine a house where, when damaged, you can top up a wall by reapplying a layer of the original building material. Not only that, but for cob structures, the material which make up cob are typically dug on site and the final structure is fully recyclable and biodegradable, making it about as green as it can get. It is believed original cob work dates back to the 11th and 12th centuries in Afghanistan, which has the oldest man-made cob structures. Cob consists of a mixture of clay, sand, straw and water and is generally used to create sculptural artistic forms due to the ease of creating rounded shapes. In the UK, it is associated with Cornwall and Devon, southwestern counties, which had constructed using cob since the 15th century. Then the advent of the Industrial Revolution meant bricks and other materials became more readily available, so cob's popularity diminished. However, recently it has started to regain traction in eco-building movements. Another of my videos explores if earthships are the future of green housing. However, earthships use earth rammed into tyres, which has its limitations in colder and more humid climates, hence why it's used in New Mexico's earthship communities. In wetter climates, cob is a better alternative, as shown by the thousands of cob homes in the UK which have stood weathering for over 800 years. Cob walls are a good store of humidity as they effectively absorb moisture from the atmosphere and release it again when the air dries out. On top of that, the rubber in tyres has large amounts of toxicity and there are worries that the natural deterioration of those tyres used in the construction of earth ships could result in that toxicity leaking into the living space. With cob houses, tyres are not usually used within the structures. Similarly to rammed earth, cob has a very low insulation value per thickness and therefore very thick walls are required to to reach the insulation of traditional buildings, hence why the houses in Devon have three foot deep walls. Cobb can be constructed using the TARP method, which was developed in 1994 by a cobber in North America called Becky B. And this method involves laying dry materials flat onto a tarp where dry materials include sand and clay. And it typically uses a volume ratio of two to one, two to two, or three to one for sand to clay, but it depends on the characteristics of the sand and clay used that needs to be experimented with. Dry materials need to then be mixed on the tarp, so that's typically done by two people holding opposite corners and folding the tarp together and then rotating to the next side and repeating the same process. And typically once that's done about three to four times, the dry materials tend to be mixed thoroughly. Then there needs to be a crater made in the middle of the mix and a small amount of water added. So typically the volume of water added is five times less the total volume of sand and clay added together. And it's important the mix holds its form when building. As before, the, the mix can be mixed together uh, by folding the corners in and then rotating to each corner. And if the cob is a good consistency, it should form into a huge burrito each time. And if dry materials still aren't mixed, then more water should be added. And if too wet, then you can just leave it to dry in the sun. Finally, some straw should be sprinkled across the surface of the cob and the mixing process should be repeated. So usually a good ratio is a compressed volume of straw, which is five times less than the total volume of sand and clay added together. So before building a whole cob house, it's suggested that you try some other projects to get a better idea of how to dig, mix and apply the cob. So what I thought was a really interesting project is what you're seeing here, so a cob wall. And there's many tutorials and things like that you can either find online or also through books. So there are also some potential drawbacks to using cob. So those include a very slow construction process as cob walls should be left to dry for approximately one week weather dependent after two to three feet of vertical construction before new layers are applied and when this happens the walls will shrink slightly as they lose some of the water content. Secondly after construction is complete you'll also need to wait for the walls to completely dry out as otherwise moisture levels in the house will be dangerously high and that can take up to two years. Thirdly, construction cannot take place in wet weather and the home will need an adequate roof or protection from the rain as cob is very susceptible to water damage, hence why it's suggested that there is a roof with ample overhang. On top of that, maintenance will be a lot more labour intensive than a typical home um, due to potentially having to reapply layers and to pass part L insulation performance requirements for building requirements in the UK, walls will need to be about three feet thick 
unless some insulation is added in, as is discussed later on in this video. If you are enjoying the video, please do leave it a like and subscribe to the channel. It does really help out the channel. I have many other videos exploring similar topics on that. So the cost of a standard cob house ranges quite a bit dependent on the availability of materials at the site, and but it can range from 50 to about 2,000 pound per square meter, when the biggest factor affecting that is also the cost of labor. So taking the average, we can say it's about 1,025 pounds per square meter, whereas the average UK house costs 2,375 pounds per square meter. So both these costs exclude the cost of planning permission, which could be harder to attain at the moment for cob houses as they are far less common. So Google Trends clearly shows that cob houses are being adopted more frequently now and that search results are far more abundant um, and there's a clear trend going upwards. But if ways can be found to reduce the required wall thickness to meet Part L building regulation, commercial applications will be more feasible. Whilst the thermal properties of cob can be improved by incorporating more straw into the mix, this does weaken the mix and reduces the cohesion. The University of Plymouth has been working on the thickness problem by reducing the wall thickness to 0.6 meters, 0.3 meters of which is cob, and 0.3 meters is insulation, where that 0.3 meters of insulation contains a high percentage of hemp shiv, which is effectively the chopped up woody part of the plant, which is very sustainable as it can grow quickly on poor soils. Whilst I don't see cob replacing standard building materials for at least the next few years, if more focus is put on meeting building regulations, sustainable methods for producing cob and building with it can be established. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you'd like to support the channel, please like this video and also subscribe to the channel.